I see far too many people make technique mistakes when doing their curls that are limiting their bicep growth. Here's how to fix that. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science, owner, aka proud owner, of moderately sized biceps. Before we go into what the best technique for your curls might be, we need to understand what good technique even is. What is good technique and how much does it matter? Well, fortunately for you, dear viewer, I'm actually the author on a recent narrative review looking at exactly this. What is the best technique for building muscle? Well, in all likelihood, there are three components. Let me break them down for you. First, is you need to have an effective tempo. And based on a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues from a few years ago, that is going to be anywhere between about two seconds per repetition and eight seconds per repetition. Once you're within this range of about two seconds per rep and eight seconds per rep, there likely isn't going to be a big, if any, difference in how much muscle you build. With regards to your curls, that means you don't want to be power curling the weight. If your curl looks like a reverse clean, where you have your hands underneath the bar as opposed to over the bar, you're not going to grow your best. Instead, try to aim for at least one second on the lowering or eccentric phase to get more muscle growth. But in general, as long as your rep takes at least two seconds to complete, on average, your lowering phase is at least as slow as your lifting phase, you're probably in a good spot as far as tempo goes. So potentially aim for at least a two second eccentric phase or so and try to be explosive on the lifting phase or on the way up. The final takeaway on tempo, if your reps are taking more than about eight seconds, that's probably not good for muscle growth. Not a huge issue I see a lot of time, if anything it's the opposite, but it does bear repeating because some people out there do super slow tempos on everything. Next, a theoretically important component of good techniques is to limit momentum or essentially involvement of undesired muscle groups and or joints. Ultimately, the technique you use while doing curls should essentially maximize the chances of your biceps being the first thing to give out when you end a set. The more other muscle groups or joints you involve, the lower that chance becomes. What this means is that power curling the weight where you're involving your hips, that is to say your hamstrings, your glutes, your adductors, your lower back, and sometimes even going on your tippy toes, like doing a calf raise during the curl. All of those things likely do nothing for building your biceps better, but do add fatigue for your lower body and for your spinal extensors for no apparently good reason. You'll just be using more weight than is actually beneficial for growing your biceps. Importantly, this is actually the topic of a study that we're conducting this summer where we're comparing using very loose body English heavy technique to using very strict technique and actually measuring muscle growth to see whether it makes a difference. But theoretically, I would recommend keeping body English or involvement of other joints to a minimum. And in general, we want to keep the work to the elbow flexors. In this case, the three Bs, the biceps brachii, the brachial radialis, and the brachialis. And as a minor point, this might mean that you want to limit shoulder flexion during the curl. Because the two heads of the biceps aren't the only muscle groups responsible for flexing your shoulder, your front delts and your upper chest, do that too, it may be worth limiting this for this reason. Just making sure that the elbow flexors are the limiting factor and that you're limited by elbow flexion strength. The third main component of good technique is range of motion. And depending on the range of motion you use, you may actually see a difference in your muscle building of maybe around 5 to 20%. Here are the main takeaways when it comes to range of motion. We want to make sure that we are targeting longer muscle lengths or at least that we're including them. So just doing those top half reps where you're focusing on the peak contraction is likely limiting your muscle growth. At the very least, you want to have a full range of motion where you're getting a stretch on your elbow flexors at the bottom of each rep. And in fact, you can take this to the next level by just doing length and partials, wherein you do only the bottom half of the rep and focus on that stretched position. And there is some evidence suggesting that this might lead to more muscle growth compared to just doing a full range of motion. Now, I'm sure you've heard the claim that the biceps don't actually benefit from length and training. They don't actually benefit from being trained in that stretched position. Well, let's actually shit test that claim by looking at the direct evidence on this topic. Because it turns out the most direct research on this topic directly contradicts this claim. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at these four studies, the only four studies looking at different muscle length training, looking at actual muscle growth, to see whether training in a stretch position does lead to more muscle growth than training in a more shortened position. The first study is a study by Pinto and colleagues that compared doing full range of motion reps in the preacher curl to doing roughly half reps, but more so to the top half of the rep. That is to say the more shortened position. Both groups saw muscle growth, but the differences leaned in favor of the full range of motion group where they included that stretch position. So the first study is 
is in favor of including the stretch in your training for the biceps. The second study is a study by Pedrosa and colleagues where they compared doing top half partials on the preacher curl to doing bottom half partials on the preacher curl within participant, which meant that one arm was doing one approach and the other arm was using the other approach. This allows researchers to minimize the effect of lifestyle variables and genetic variables on the results. They assessed cross-sectional area of the biceps brachii at 50% of muscle length and at 75% of muscle length. Both conditions saw similar hypertrophy at the 50% site with maybe a slight benefit in favor of shortened training, but at the 75% site, there was much greater muscle growth in the lengthened partial group compared to the shortened partial group. And when you look at the overall cross-sectional area of the biceps, that was also in favor of the lengthened partial group. Next, we have a study by Zabalita Korda and colleagues that compared the incline curl to the preacher curl. For reference, the incline curl lengthens the biceps a little bit more by having your shoulder more extended, whereas the preacher curl shortens the biceps a little bit more, but has greater tension in that bottom position. Indeed, in the preacher curl, when your forearm is parallel to the ground, is when the moment arm is greatest. They measured hypertrophy at 50, 60, and 70% of muscle length. The muscle growth results are a bit confusing, but here's the takeaway. Only the preacher curl group saw significant growth at only the 70% site. However, if you look past just statistical significance, you see that all improvements at the 50% site, 60% site, and 70% site leaned in favor of the preacher curl group. In my view, this is evidence that when you do lengthen training for the biceps or for any muscle, you do want to make sure that there is sufficient challenge in that stretched position. The final study by Sato and colleagues was a study using the preacher curl performed on an isokinetic dynamometer, which is a machine that allows you to closely control what range of motion is being trained through. They compared doing lengthened partials to doing shortened partials. They measured muscle growth at a variety of sites, including both the biceps brachii and the brachialis. At all sites measured, muscle growth was greater in the lengthened partial group compared to the shortened partial group. These differences were largest at the more distal sites, which is commonly the case with more lengthened training or more stretch training versus more shortened training. And so across these four studies, we consistently see roughly similar growth or just straight up better growth when focusing on the stretch position. So the claim that the biceps don't benefit from lengthened training is actually directly falsifiable by the most direct evidence we have on the biceps and muscle growth. So if we want to focus on the stretch, this may work best on exercises that have some tension at the bottom, like a preacher curl or like that behind the back cable curl that both has tension at the bottom, but also allows you to get a full stretch on the biceps. If you want more information on the best exercise for bicep growth, check out a video above here. Back to good technique. For the biceps, this means we'll want to lock out the elbow on each rep to fully lengthen the elbow flexors. We'll also want to keep our arms pinned back so as to extend the shoulder a little bit further and lengthen the biceps a little bit more. And we'll want to avoid bringing your arms up during the curl as this is shoulder flexion and will shorten the biceps a little bit more. And as I mentioned earlier, not only does it shorten the biceps, but it also potentially involves the front delt and upper chest a little bit more, making it less likely that the biceps would be the limiting factor. And in fact, as a consequence of this research on the stretch position, we may also want to pronate the wrist or use an overhand grip while doing curls. Since one of the functions of the biceps is to supinate the wrist, if we do the opposite, we are further lengthening the two heads of the biceps. In general, when considering the stretch in your exercises or in your technique, it's important to consider both the muscle length and the amount of tension present in that position. So those are the three components from our review paper on optimal technique for muscle building. A fourth component is preference and pain management. If you're hitting all three of the above components, but a certain technique feels better or is more enjoyable to you, feel free to use that one. For instance, some minor body English likely won't be the end of the world. Likewise, if you're doing all of the above, but something just hurts, like your elbow, your shoulder, your forearms, or anything else, and using a slightly different technique actually helps with the pain, like for example, flexing your shoulders a little bit during the curl, feel free to do it. And without further ado, here is the optimal technique to build bigger biceps in the curl. First, grab the barbell or dumbbells. If the gym is empty, yes, you can curl in the squat rack. Start with your elbows fully extended. Keeping your elbows flush to your sides, curl your elbows up, bring the bar up in an arced motion. As forcefully as you can, either go all the way up until your forearm and upper arm are squished together, or for length and partials, come around halfway up until your elbow forms an angle of 90 degrees. Avoid pausing in the top position, as this could increase the time spent at relatively shorter muscle lengths. 
thereby reducing the time spent in that beneficial stretched position. Control the weight back down, taking at least a second or two. Once you've reached the bottom, feel free to briefly pause. Throughout the whole rep, stay as upright as you can and minimize movement of your torso. If you find that your torso consistently swings around, try squeezing your glutes. Keep an eye out for your heels. If you find they come up consistently, try raising your toes a little bit. So that is the best technique for curling that I can recommend based on the evidence we have. Let's go through the checklist of what makes technique optimal for muscle building and see if we actually achieved it. First, we have at least a one to two second eccentric, which means no reverse power cleaning. We're being explosive during the concentric or lifting phase of the movement. And we're also using tempo as a means to accentuate or increase the emphasis on the stretch position a little bit by avoiding pausing at the top and by potentially slowing down the movement a little bit at the bottom and pausing in that stretch position. As far as range of motion goes, the barbell curl isn't particularly length and biased. There's not actually much tension for most of the bottom half of the rep, but by using length and partials, we can substantially increase this and circumvent this issue a little bit. Alternatively, you could go for a variation like the preacher curl, which increases the tension in that relatively lengthened position. You could go for a variation like the incline curl, where you're increasing the stretch on the biceps by extending your shoulder further, or you could combine both, getting both a better stretch on the elbow flexors and getting more tension in that stress position by using something like the behind the back cable curl. For all of these curl variations, the same fundamentals of good curl technique would apply. Finally, we are limiting shoulder flexion by keeping your arms pinned to your side, as this would further shorten the biceps, which is the opposite of what we want for muscle growth. And finally, as far as momentum or involvement of other joints and muscle groups that might detract from the biceps being a limiting factor, by keeping your torso static, your feet on the ground, and your arms by your side, we are minimizing the involvement of other muscle groups, ensuring the elbow flexors are what fail first. That was the best bicep curl technique to maximize muscle building. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe. If there's anything else you want to see me make a video on, leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see. If you're looking for a coach to handle your training or nutrition, check out the link above and I could be coaching you. With that being said, have a wonderful day Use that good technique on your curls, get jacked biceps, and I'll see you in that next one. Peace.